everyone. Welcome to the second episode of Forbes India's COVID-19 Frontline Warriors series. We bring to you a glimpse behind the scenes and into the lives of warriors that are relentlessly providing help to people in need during a global pandemic. This week's COVID-19 warrior is 34-year-old US-based cardiologist Dr. Swayman Singh, who's addressing the medical needs of thousands of farmers currently protesting the three farm laws at the Delhi borders. Dr. Singh came to India in December 2020 for a short visit after someone he knew had a heart attack at the protest site. There was no doctor to attend to patients amid the blazing pandemic, and it made Dr. Singh stay indefinitely. Singh is also the founder and president of the NGO Five River Hearts Association that operates in the US, India and Ghana. The team has set up medical camps and makeshift hospitals at the protest sites. They provide medicines, and consultations to protesters, policemen, CRPF personnel, and visitors for free. Hello, my name is Dr. Swamin Singh. I got to know about the protest uh, while I was in America. It was on YouTube or through just, you know, family gatherings or friends. I mean, it seemed like for the past one year, you know, wherever we were, all we could talk about were the three laws and how it was going to affect the farmers. When I saw the suffering of, you know, that the people were going through, uh, it just became personal because a lot of those people were the people that uh, were either my patients, my family. It just felt like it was my duty to at least go there and see for myself, you know, how were the conditions on the ground and see if I could really make a difference. So that was the reason, you know, I, uh, I flew to India. Uh, the initial plan was for five days, but you know, after seeing everything uh, that was happening and, I, and seeing the difference that I could make, uh, I felt I couldn't go back, so I ended up staying. Thankfully, not many farmers at the borders have tested positive for COVID-19 to date. Singh and his team conduct regular seminars and awareness drives on COVID-19 and vaccination for the farmers. The team has also created infrastructure to look after coronavirus patients. You know, uh, COVID, COVID is a very tough situation. COVID is a tough disease. I mean, I've dealt with it in America. I've seen patients die. We've saved people from, uh, from death. I came here, I realized uh, that somehow, some way, there was no COVID in the protest. Uh, but we still kept going. You know, we have given up over 100,000 N95 masks in the protest. We have given out more than 50,000 sanitizers, right? So I felt that we did a lot of hard work in the past six months, random, random COVID testing, uh, random uh, term, uh, temperature checks, random, uh, you know, just, just asking people questions, you know, and seeing if there was any hint of people being affected and wherever there was, trying to isolate them. And I think we did a wonderful job. And I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why you don't see COVID in the protest reached out to both Delhi and Punjab government to provide vaccine for the protesters, but has got no response so far. Um, I mean, so far we have had no support from the government and, you know, honestly, we haven't asked for it. So I hate to say, oh, we, you know, we asked for this or that. We really didn't. The only thing we really asked the government for has been the vaccine. We have been begging the government to get us the vaccine. I think vaccine is something, we have a you know, huge weapon in our, in our repertoire that we need to take advantage of and we need to vaccinate people. We have also uh, wrote to the Delhi government, we have written to the Punjab government in trying to get the vaccine. We have talked to our local uh, authorities here, uh, all to no avail. We actually even you know, build a large list of people, over a thousand people who wanted the vaccine. Uh, all I think we're asking for the government is, you know, have, give these people a safe haven so they can protest safely uh, and one day, you know, hopefully return home. Uh, you know, right now, they're literally living in, in horrible conditions and, uh, you know, I think government is not helping. The Five River Hearts team is also building semi-permanent houses for the elderly, women and children at the borders with a workforce of around 1,000 people, including NGO members and volunteers. They have built 1,100 bamboo and steel houses, a library with around 10,000 books, created a network of 10,000 doctors from around the world who teleconsult, 
and have treated over 6 lakh patients in medical camps. When you do this type of work, you need a, a big team. Uh, and luckily we do have a big team. We have thousands of doctors who are part of our telemedicine service and our other medical staff. Uh, we release a list of medications. We release a list of things that we require at the camps. Uh, that list is usually sent out every two weeks. And you know, there's a lot of great folks out there in Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, other parts of India who end up sending, sending supplies, even from foreign countries, the Amazon supplies to us. You know, you don't need, uh, a million dollars to be able to do what we're doing. All you have to be able to do is bring people together. Like, hey, let's work as a team. Like, you know, hey, you can get us bamboo. Okay, you can get us steel. You can get us, you know, beds. This person can get us this stuff. So let's all come together and pinch while we are on the ground and going door to door to see where actually the stuff is needed. Instead of just handing out stuff randomly, we actually go and actually see for ourselves trolley to trolley, okay, you know what, this guy needs this, let's try to get him this, you know. You know, one of the things that you see here at the borders is that when you feel that everything is going right, when everything is kind of going towards you, you have another day. Uh, you know, whether it's, the, you know, things that happen on the 26th, whether it's just another thing, uh, a fire, random fire, random this, random that, now it's the monsoons right, uh, filled up gutters, hygiene problems. Uh, you know, medically it's an issue, it's a huge issue, right? People, uh, we had a death from a, from a shed that flew open, you know, flew up and then literally landed on a person's head uh, and, the, and the person died. Singh plans to continue serving at the borders for as long as the protests will go on. Uh, you know, as far as our organization, as far as me, uh, I, I, it's very hard for me to say that I can just get up and leave. I mean, I'm, uh, the, the way people look at me, the, the way people treat me, the way people expect things out of me, not just, not just a protester. If you just go to Bahadurgarh, some of the patients that are now become my normal day-to-day -day patients, you know, they, I think they expect me to be here for as long as they need me, right? And I think they need me right now. Uh, I became a doctor to help. I became a doctor to serve humanity and right now humanity needs doctors, this place needs doctors. But at this time, I'm devoted to my people, I'm devoted to my country, I'm devoted to my farmers, I'm devoted to, to this cause that I need, to, I need to help these people, I think. Uh... Singh says that the protesting farmers are just fighting for their livelihood and they need our support. I just say, like, you don't have to be part of the protest. You don't have to support the farmers, but I think to say that they're all wrong, it's probably very wrong. I mean, these, you know, hundreds of thousands of people living on the street. All I say is like, hey, take a few minutes one day, just take a few minutes out of your busy life and read about the three laws and see if who's right or wrong. And another thing I say is like, listen, if you're a doctor, you're an engineer, you're an electrician, you're a teacher, anything you are, uh, you don't have to be part of the protest, but these people are the same people who grew your grain. These are the same people whose kids are serving in the military, in the army, you know, at our borders, right? They're protecting us every day. You know, come here and serve, help them, right? Again, you don't have to be part of the protest. These are your people. If somebody's living on the street, that's our problem. If somebody's dying from, you know, uh, hot weather, that's our problem. If somebody doesn't have clean water, that's our problem. If somebody doesn't have clean food, that's our problem. If somebody's living away from their family for a cause, and that's our problem, to at least listen to them, please.